Mendy youths surrender explosives to police. National government told to prioritize health. And first PNG APEC meeting underway. This is National MTV News with Helen Sayer. Good evening and thank you for joining us. This is Tuesday's News. Youths living near Mendy Town have voluntarily returned explosives to security forces in Southern Highlands Province. These explosives were stolen from a road construction company in Mendy during a rampage in the town after the declaration of the Southern Highlands Governor. Meanwhile, Southern Highlands Provincial Police Commander Joseph Tondop has warned dynamites can kill. On Sunday, the Wa and Mess Council wards of Mendy Town held a little ceremony and handed over the many dynamites they stole three months ago. Provincial Police Commander Joseph Tondop and a PNG Defence Force Explosive Ordinance Disposal spokesperson warned locals on dangers in keeping explosives. They urged them to return all explosives so it won't cause any destruction or harm to people. Younger generation can keep shabla school, shabla, shabla, good blood, think things stop in Sherlo, you all talk and walk past what they have, you plan now, you plan and walk now. Bring it this law, dig it this blue, you belong, you go to the next level. The return of stolen dynamites was made possible when a peace and restoration committee was formed to bring back normalcy into Mendy Town. A youth and community member, Roger Tandowa, was very vocal in restoring peace and normalcy. Tandowa and community leaders assured security forces to hand over persons still found in possession of dynamites. We've not been all the rest of Saturday nights, we're making this uh, rampage, uh, looting this area. So community don't block when you got in possession of some all this like, device, dynamite or something. We black like, it up, we black like, talk also. I mean something no good by bagger up in community, so we take it like, initiative. We talk about the youths, we must return this, look at the property go back long and the law, so that the uh, law and must have a right to place money. You mean the explosives collected will be destroyed by the defense EOD unit. At the meantime, with the festives and new year approaching, PPC Tondop has warned youths to refrain from dynamites as firecrackers, considering it arms and could also kill. Vasanata Yama, National MTV News, Mount Hagen. The informal senior official APEC meeting has convened in Port Moresby. This is the first official APEC meeting, a lead up to the Leaders' Summit in November 2018. The ISOM had all 21 nation representatives attending. And also, uh, the first APEC meeting is to allow country senior officials from the 21 APEC countries to visit APEC meeting sites and also discuss agendas to be discussed during the APEC 2018 Leaders' Summit. I welcome you all to Papua New Guinea. Our preparations for 2018 are in their final stages. Venues are being finalised. We have enough accommodation with the cruise ships that have been contracted and the security is and preparations are fully underway. I hope that during your stay, you, you'll have an opportunity to take a look at all our venues as well and see the progressive work that they are now in at this point of time. Minister of APEC Justin Chichenko said Papua New Guinea will advance APEC's ongoing agenda through PNG's three core policy priorities. Under this theme, Papua New Guinea will advance APEC's ongoing agenda through our three core policy priorities. They are improving connectivity and deepening regional economic integration, promoting inclusive and sustainable growth, and strengthening economic growth through structural reform. Minister Tachenko said in 2018, PNG will advance policy discussion on the digital economy through all of APEC's key work programs. We'll also continue to focus on the connectivity theme of APEC and facilitate ongoing work on, multi on the multi-year program of structural reforms. Ambassador Ivan Pomelio explained what is expected from the ISOM meeting. So today and tomorrow is about trying to understand us, for instance. We, 
We will be uh, highlighting a lot of development and growth agenda that uh, is sitting around policy theme uh, priority number two, which is inclus inclusive and sustainable growth. That is important to us for Papua New Guinea. Uh, we would need to hear from the other economies, the bigger economies, what is important for them and try to to have an arrangement that where an outcome that we reach at the end of next year uh, captures all the interests together. So it's more about reaching a, a, a convergence on, on ideas and outcomes rather than negotiation. Also at the meeting were local SME stalls and tourism promotional authorities stalled to allow delegates to experience PNG culture and buy PNG products. Adelaide Sirox Kari National, MTV News. Public servants from core government departments such as Health, Education and Treasury are undergoing a key development skills program in leadership capabilities, strategic thinking and policy development. The Pacific Leadership and Governance Precinct is a partnership program by the governments of Papua New Guinea and Australia to support development of ethical and capable public sector leaders in the country. The two weeks program is delivered in collaboration between the Pacific Institute of Leadership and Governance Universities of Papua New Guinea and Queensland, closely guided by personal management departments. Over 2,000 people since 2015 have been trained under this program which supports PNG government policies, notably leadership capability framework with gender equality and social inclusion policy. It demands equal opportunities and treatment of women in the workplace with merit-based and unbiased recruitment and promotion. However, the significance of this program is more women participants. One of the exercises we took this week is about uh, policy and, and the me mechanics and the techniques around policy making and um, sorry formulation. And this is uh, very much part of my job uh, in reviewing or analyzing whether what we're doing is right. The Future Leaders program takes over a period of nine months. The precinct supports learning and discussions in the public service through a range of training programs to strengthen key educational institutions as well as public servants and modern infrastructure. This is one of the biggest government departments in the country with health. Uh, it is very important. The training is very important for us, the education officers. Uh, we were very privileged to be selected in part of the program. Uh, we learned a lot, basically around the governance and management policy. So basically, the program is about policy, public policy. So it's very important, you know. Now everything is centered around policy, yeah? public policy. As long as we know the aspects of the policy, uh, the issues we identify, the issues and uh, policy can be framed around those issues, then we can provide uh, good advice to our executive in the department to implement whatever policies that we are about to. Stacy Yellow, National MTV News. You're with National MTV News, Parliament Stories, when we come back. Stay with us. Welcome back. In Parliament today, East Sipi Governor Alan Bird has raised concerns on a missing shipping container containing the PNG Kina notes. The notes turned up missing off the coast of Indonesia and PNG on their way to Germany to be destroyed. However, Governor Bird said since then there has been a huge influx of Kina notes circulated and used for trade at the PNG Indonesia border. The ECP governor asked the treasurer if there were processes in place to prevent future mishaps of transporting PNG Kina and how the central bank is responding to this matter. Could the good minister inform this house and particularly my people of ECP and West ECP about what steps have been taken or are going to be taken to prevent these notes from further entering our economy, particularly in light of our depressed economic situation as it is. But the bigger issue raised by the governor was how this has affected vanilla sellers and small businesses in East and West Sipik who rely on the border for trade. 
now that vanilla is so expensive, the trading is happening and vanilla is uh, being purchased at 1,200 kina a kilo on the border. Mr. Speaker, and these funds are not entering the banking system because when a villager is hanging on to 300,000 kina worth of cash, under our laws on uh, preventing money laundering, they are not allowed to deposit that cash back into the system. However, the treasurer couldn't comment on behalf of the central bank and will raise this matter if there's enough evidence on the missing notes. The central bank is obviously taking steps around that, which I'm not uh, yet aware of. But I will find out further, uh, Mr. Speaker, and, and see what more needs to be done to support the central bank in this process. Thank you. Since the free trade zone at SCO was opened over a decade ago, millions of Kina has been entering Indonesia with little returns. This has prompted calls from various institutions to establish a balanced trade agreement with Indonesia at the border. However, the government has done little to address this issue. Stanley Ove Jr., National MTV News. Samaramura MP E.C. Leonard today asked the police minister Jelta Wong to intervene and reinforce the law and order situation in Alutau. Yesterday's armed robbery saw a substantial amount of money stolen from the BSP branch. And with Alutau being a tourism spot, this can be dangerous as impediments to tourism growth. The string of criminal activities in Melon Bay province was brought to light in parliament today the Alatau BSP robbery and the Samurai Island raid. All our men, all you see factory made guns, held up the bank and got away with substantial amount of money. In the event, two security guards were shot without retaliation from the police, the public got rowdy and took the opportunity to also ransack the, our nearby shops. A group of armed men using high-powered dinghy in the early hours raided Samra Island and they actually held up a shop. They got away with substantial amount of money but in the process only terrorized him Islanders of Samurai, including women and children. In 2014, there was another raid in Misima, where two high-powered dinghies armed with criminals, all going to raid him again, one plus shop, all steal him more money, and at the same time, all kidnap him, owner, one time family belong in, and they got away with it. The police were under-resourced, on the firepower, they just spectated, and the criminals escaped. The police minister says to look into the matter and call on respective leaders to communicate with his department. The immediate plan is to go down to Samurai. We have a team set up to go down there to assess and to chase up this criminal. He, um, he took the... Uh, he took the deposit on the way into the bank. And this is the same guy that's been running around. We've caught him once before. He's escaped through... Uh, I don't know how he escaped, but he escaped. But uh, we're working on it now. And we have, we have a future. We're trying to, we're trying to beef up the uh, Millen Bay side. We have a lot of coastal areas. Um, the government is looking with, with the help of, the, of other, other programs to help make sure that these things don't happen again. Um, but once I get the information, I'll let you know. We are on to it. We got this report yesterday. Um, it would also help if the leader, if you have any other information or any leaders have information on, on what's happening in this area, would be more than happy to uh, come to my office and we can help the, uh, we'll send people down to sort it out. Thank you. Godwin Eki, National MTV News. 
Anglim Southwagi MP Joe Kuli has questioned the national government if there are plans to rehabilitate coffee plantations in his district of Juwaka province. Mr. Kuli said there are 12 major plantations in the province that need serious attention. There are 12 rundown coffee plantations, which includes the Bunumwu area plantation, the biggest in the country. The largest plantation in the country, you mean? Waki Mac plantation and run down. Mika Tolbla plantation and run down. Kurumu plantation. Marban plantation. Warwa plantation. Pukmal Pukamal plantation. Mandan plantation. Kindeng plantation. Avian plantation. Kuchu plantation. Kram plantation. Warawa plantation. Now all the plantation. All this la plantation is run down. Now this la plantation is our. Good revenues are come to the country too. Now our electorate from it too, also benefit. The Agriculture Minister Benny Allen says under the 2018 budget, agriculture has been allocated funding. A slice of it is to rehabilitate plantations throughout the country. This la government is serious. Lo invest in the agriculture sector. Uh, <coughs> people are thinking about lo rehabilitating or plantations. So. The minister also announced NEC will relook at the National Plantation Management Agency which will task the rehabilitation process. National uh, Executive Council approved uh, uh, one uh, agency before he worked on uh, coffee, or call him National Plantation Management Agency. Uh, cabinet approved him uh, to bring this agency, come back, lo help him, lo rehabilitation, lo plantations, cocoa, and all other commodities in the country. So National Plantation Management Agency by work more on them. Department of me, uh, Minister of uh, State uh, uh, Enterprise, law look survey law some of the random plantations. Stanley Ove Jr., National MTV News. And now looking at our finance news, the Kina closed unchanged at 0 0.3115 US dollars in the interbank markets. At Bank South Pacific, Yokina was buying 0 0.304 US dollars, 0.3947 Australian dollars, 0.2513 Euro and 33.72 Japanese yen. Looking at commodity prices at New York close, gold and copper closed higher while coffee and cocoa closed the day lower. Palm oil, crude oil and copper closed the day lower. And on the stock market, the Dow Jones closed at 58.46 points higher, the ASX closed at 13.77 points lower, and the All Ordinaries closed at 13.32 points lower. National MTV News continues with more right after these short messages. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the news. Papua New Guinea's Fishing Industry Association has warned the vision for the country to be the Pacific's tuna hub will be dead unless action is taken to save it. The multi-million Kina Pacific Marine Industrial Zone in Medang is a key part of the vision, but it has seen a delay in construction. Leon Girari is in Manila and files this report. Papua New Guinea's Fishing Industry Association has warned the vision for PNG to be the tuna hub of the Pacific will be dead unless action is taken to save it. The multi-million Kina Pacific Marine Industrial Zone in Medang is a key part of the vision, but it has since seen a delay in construction. In Manila at the 14th Western and Central Pacific Fisheries Commission, the association said the project has the potential to compete with fisheries-rich nations like Philippines, but lack of dialogue with stakeholders is holding. I think if we can come back and uh, probably uh, uh, create some awareness and education to our policy makers to say that, see, we've come this far, this, uh, this is a working policy. We don't have to throw it into the bin if, it, if, if they consider it not working, but we bring it back to the table to fine-tune it and say, okay, but let's look at another five, ten years down the line, or 15 <coughs> years down the line. That's how we're going to get there. Now, what are the measures that in, uh, support uh, policy and investment, the nationalization plan should be in place. That should be 
that road that we we, we, we as uh, stakeholders should be participating and discussing on around the table. Eh? I think I think in our world sometimes we come here and then we see we, we sit behind each other in the delegation uh, behind the tables as one team and the industry and our government representatives. But when we go back home, they, we sit across the table and they see as competitors or, or uh, an enemy. Mm. If we're going to go down this uh, long-term uh, road, we should be looking at each other as strategic partners. According to Association Treasurer Fabian Chow, the project is going nowhere fast unless the government of the day speaks to the right people and bring in the right people. In Madang, after these success stories, a PMIZ that's going nowhere fast, that people are talking big stories but nothing's going to happen. You're talking about a 350 million Kina, US dollars, investment that's just going to be wasted because no one wants to come there because things have changed. And that intelligence response we had to bring in the market players over these last 20 years, no one seems to be listening, no one seems to know that Something's changed. The last three years have been a disaster. Leanne Girari, National MTV News, Manila. Meanwhile, observer safety on fishing vessels in the Pacific is a prolonged issue in the fishing industry, sparking concerns on environmentalists calling for the implementation of safety measures. The safety call reiterated following the disappearance of the late James Numbaru earlier this year from a Chinese-flagged PNG-chartered Perth Sun vessel off the coast of Nauru. The late Numbaru was the sixth observer to go missing at sea in recent times and the fourth from Papua New Guinea. Environmentalists and NGO groups have used the WCPFC forum in Manila to air their concerns about observer safety in the Pacific. This is following the death of observer James Nambaru in June this year. Granted it is a challenge faced by all seafarers, the Pacific countries have placed a strong focus on observer safety. According to Alfred Cook from the World Wildlife Fund New Zealand, the measures put in place to protect regional fisheries observers are not being adequately implemented. In James Nambaru's case, who was the PNG observer that, that went missing, um, I, I think there's still quite a few questions around what happened. Uh, the overall conclusion was that it was um, a uh, potential suicide. Um, there was some evidence, video evidence, um, of what happened on board the vessel. Uh, and that actually emphasizes a, a, a greater need for electronic monitoring on board these vessels. It's not just about, uh, you know, catching people doing bad things. It's also about being able to prove the uh, the elements of what really happened out at sea. So it can it can protect um, the industry and crews as much as it can um, uh, punish them for for wrongdoing. Cook added that the Pacific countries and regulatory government bodies need to be transparent and release information to the families and the public about observer deaths in a timely manner, something he claims is not happening regularly. Philip Pollan, Deputy Managing Director for the National Fisheries Authority, gave an update on the death of the late Mr. Nambaru, stating that the case is now in the hands of the police and not with the NFA. We believe we have the biggest uh, observer team in, in, in the Pacific. We've got about 250 active observers, much more than other Pacific Island countries. Um, the task of managing the large number is, is quite difficult. Um, mm -hmm. And we acknowledge the fact that there is incident like that happening. We're doing all we can to minimize the um, incident as such. So NFA is having trouble because we are not an investigating body anymore. The investigation now is shifted to the police as a criminal investigations. So what we're doing now is sitting with police and said, look, how can we actually take the interest of the family so that we at least we provide some comfort in addressing some of those things that they think that we have not done well or the report has not done well. Uh, police being police is quite slow in, in doing its report and we can't do much. We can't push them and we can't do much. And we have just to wait until the um, police submit the report to Corona who will then uh, declare the person uh, diseased or missing and what actions we should, do we take. Leanne Girari, National MTV News, Manila. 
It was eye-opening for those who attended Parliament today with the use of sign language. Interpreters interpreted to persons with disabilities about the proceedings. Parliament was raised this morning with the presence of persons with disability from the Josiah home. Not only that, but they were able to understand the proceedings through interpretations. The presence was acknowledged by the National Parliament Speaker. So that their dignity and human rights can be respected and upheld through increased social participation and inclusion. It comes the day after the commemoration of the International Day of Person with Disability under the theme Transforming Towards Sustainable and Resilient Society for All, which calls for the public and private sector, including individuals, to change the environment setting to cater for them. And to raise awareness on the situations of persons with disabilities in every aspect of political, social, economic and cultural life. It aims to promote an understanding of disability issues and mobilize support for the dignity, rights and well-being of persons with disability. The dignity and human rights of persons with disability must be respected to increase of social participation and inclusion. And Papua New Guinea is in the pipeline a draft bill to break the many barriers. The victim threat is a senior. And it's already in place. It's just waiting to be launched. Then you know what we will be doing. So we'll be, we want the media, you two media, you'll partner with us. The kind of disability requires different kind of intervention. So for that, there is a need for data. And that's a very critical part, I think, the policy should try to address. Of course, resources are limited always, uh, but it's also important to prioritize. I mean, uh, where to start and what to address uh, in the beginning and slowly going forward to address other issues. And prioritization is very critical. Fabian Hakalitz, National MTV News. The World Bank country economist says while PNG tightens its expenditures during difficult economic times caused by faults in oil and gas prices, key areas such as health must remain priority. While the government of Papua New Guinea is trying to rely on the agriculture sector to generate income, they must not lose focus on health. This was the major topic of discussion at the first PNG economic update which was launched today. Despite the slow growth in PNG economy, a rallying agricultural sector and improving liquefied natural gas production are recent highlights of the PNG economy, according to a new report by the World Bank. The first Papua New Guinea economic update hosted by World Bank was launched today. A fresh one will be launched every six months. Uh, Papua New Guinea has um, biodiversity and natural resources wealth, which are um, rarely equaled, let us say, um, elsewhere in the world. And that holds the potential for transforming these resources into wealth that can contribute to the well-being of its whole population. The size of the economy of Papua New Guinea also is such that this is an economy that can promote and sustain the development of a non-resource sector that could balance the development that can be hoped for from the resource sector. Under the theme of reinforcing resilience, World Bank PNG's country economist Chandi Koloratne says an integrated approach is necessary to deliver a fit for purpose microeconomic policy framework. However, certain items, it's not a question of not cutting health or education. It's have a look at what exactly is being spent in those areas, irrespective of its, its health, education, or any other sector. If it's necessary, like drugs and medical supplies, try and maintain. He says while PNG cuts back on spending areas to tap into agriculture and other areas where it can generate income, it must not lose focus on health. Stacy Yalo, National MTV News. The alternate government, alternative government has handed, handed down its budget reply accusing the ruling government of fake figures in the 2018 national budget. 
Shadow Minister for Treasury and Finance Ian Ling Starkey delivered the opposition's address to Parliament this afternoon, calling on the national government to be more responsible in the budgetary process. According to the alternative government, there are three critical economic issues that require attention. A budget crisis, job and living standard crisis and a foreign exchange crisis. Chukai Sports is next. Don't go away. Chukai Sports. Welcome to Chukai Sports. West New Britain Province was the proud host of the 2018 Commonwealth Games Queen's Baton. West New Britain Governor Sassindran Mutavel said it was a momentum when the baton arrived just in time for the for the 7th PNG Games official closing ceremony. The baton that bears Queen Elizabeth II's message has travelled across 64 Commonwealth countries since the relay officially began on Commonwealth Day, March 13th in London. This was the scene at Hoskins Airport last Friday. The baton and its entourage was received by West New Britain Governor Sassin Ran Mutuval with a traditional procession. Papua New Guinea is the 65th country to be graced by the Queen's baton and Kimber happens to be chosen for the baton relay as it coincided with the closing ceremony of the 7th PNG Games. Yes, and rightfully as the Minister for Health, I should be officiating this and... One of the custodians is holding up there. It came through to our PNG Games. Speaking to MTV Sports on Saturday evening, Commonwealth Games Federation Regional Vice President Oshania Hugh Graham said the Queen's message will continue its journey to Solomon Islands and then to the closing ceremony of the Pacific Mini Games in Port Vila, Vanuatu. This, this, um, this Queen's baton relay of Gold Coast 2018, we want people to engage. We want people to come, get photos with it, to touch it, uh, be inspired by the message uh, of uh, not only what the Queen has placed inside, which will be read out on the 4th of April, but also what it symbolises. And it symbolises uh, friendship and peace uh, in terms of the 70 Commonwealth uh, countries. The baton relay started on Saturday morning at Liamo Reef Resort, where it was accommodated and travelled the main highway to Talase villages Kilo, Tamara and even visited Walindi Resort, where locals had a chance to touch the Queen's baton. In its journey to spread the spirit of the games, the baton travelled to Numondo and then the vicinity of the township. And it later went on to Nivani, Dagi, Navio and Mossa. The Commonwealth Games take place every four years and this Queen's Baton is on its way to the Gold Coast, Australia for the 2018 Commonwealth Games. This Queen's Baton represents in form and in spirit the Gold Coast. It represents three key things, our past, our present and our future. The back here is made of macadamia wood which represents our past. Uh, because the local indigenous people of the Gold Coast would plant macadamia seeds as they travel through the land to mark their path and also as a form of food as well. So this represents our indigenous heritage. The centre, the stainless steel stringer represents the present because it literally has the journey of the 2018 Queen's Baton, has all of the 70 Commonwealth nations and territories that the baton is travelling to on its epic journey around the world covering 288 days, over 230,000 kilometres. And you'll see, when you look closely here, where Papua New Guinea is on the Queen's Baton. And then the front, the leading edge represents the future. It's made by reclaimed plastic that was collected from the waterways of the Gold Coast. And it's really to send a message of sustainability around the Commonwealth to think about our overconsumption and our pollution. PNG Olympics Committee General Secretary Ovita Rapila explained the importance of having the baton in the country. It's fantastic that we get to share in that uh, in that journey, um, especially um, Papua New Guinea being part of the Commonwealth, and uh, we have a <coughs> we're preparing our team um, for the Gold Coast Commonwealth Games uh, in uh, in April this year, 
and um, it's it's a precursor an event uh, leading up to the Commonwealth Games. After the Oceania leg of the relay, the baton will enter Australia via Brisbane on Christmas Eve, where the 100 Days relay will start. And on the 100th day, the baton will be read on April 4, 2018, at the opening ceremony of the Commonwealth Games on the Gold Coast. Dina Rose Rako, National MTV Sports. Stay tuned. Trukai Sports continues after the break. Trukai Sports. Welcome back to Trukai Sports. Football Federation Papua New Guinea has launched their 2018 calendar. The calendar was unveiled by President John Capinato. FFPNG President John Capinato, along with executive committee members of the Federation, were all present at today's event. The launching also saw the unveiling of the new FFPNG website. CNA Vice President Roy Carmen, on behalf of members of the executive committee, launched the new website. We hope this website and by, and by bringing football to the next level, and by make sure and by open my long, all big level man who said he looked at football or some more like the OFC or line of FIFA. All must look so I want them something in work come up football inside the inside the country. Football Federation Papua New Guinea's main vision is not to marginalize, but to promote and bring football to all Papua New Guineans. Before launching the 2018 calendar, Mr. Capinato spoke of their plans to get more associations affiliated to the Federation. They've assigned people in charge of the Northern, Southern, Highlands and the NGI conferences to get associations in their region affiliated. In the website you will see we have conferences. We have the Northern Conferences, Southern Conferences, uh, Highlands Conference, all in there. So we've got their profiles in there. So they will be carrying out their responsibilities in their own regions. All these guys are volunteers. Uh, they are volunteers to ensure that football gets throughout all this region. The FFPNG calendar was launched by Capinato, which shows the different events that will take place next year. The first on their events calendar is the FFPNG Member Association's registrations, which runs through the whole of February 2018. Followed after is the NPL Champion League playoffs in the Northern Conference on the 17th and 18th of February and the Southern Conference Champion League playoffs on the 23rd and 24th. Next year's calendar of events will also feature a seven-side tournament, an under-17 youth conference tournament and the National Premier League Conferences competition. We're trying to do things more professionally and more friendly to our many of our young people in, in this country. Elijah Levet, National MTV Sports. And that ends Trukai Sports. The weather details up next. Trukai Sports. Trukai Sports. The weather details are proudly brought to you by Dulux Weather Shield. With doing with Dulux. Taking a look at the weather forecast for tonight in the southern region, evening shower or two in Port Moresby and Alotau, cloudy periods in Daru, evening rain showers in Kerama and a few showers in Popandita. In the Momasa region, showers and thunderstorms in Lei, Wewak and Vanimo, rain showers with possible thunderstorms in Medang. In the New Guinea Islands region, showers and possible thunderstorms in Loringa and Kaviang, rain showers and thunderstorms in Kokopo, Rabal and Kimbe, and rain showers developing in Buka. And in the Highlands region, rain showers in all centres. The weather details are proudly brought to you by Dulux Weather Shield, with doing with Dulux. Before we go, a quick look at our stories making headlines. Mendy youth surrender explosives to police, national government told to prioritize health, and first PNG APEC meeting underway. And that's the news for Tuesday, the 5th of December 2017. From the entire MTV News team, pleasant viewing. Good night.